Hello to all the student authors out there. I'm Lisa Maxbauer Price. I am the author and photographer behind the children's book Squash Boom Beat. And just like you, I used to be a kid who would make stories. Actually, here's a photo of me from back then. Well, I'm here to talk to you today about adding great artwork to the stories you've written. Before I became an author, I spent years working as a magazine writer and editor, and I learned a few things about choosing artwork that would really make your stories come alive. So I'm gonna share some of those secrets with you today. Let's get started. Tip number one, words and pictures are a team. They should work together and help each other out. Let's look at an example from this story called Wolf Camp. It's all about a dog who wants to be a wild wolf. So the story starts by the dog explaining, my name is Homer and I am a dog, but sometimes I am very wolfish. And then we see this picture. Now the words don't have to tell us that he likes to hunt stuffed animals in his house because the pictures do that for us. So remember when making your books, the words alone don't have to tell the whole story. The pictures can help to create a perfect combination. Tip number two, find the right balance of words and pictures. Making a great story is sort of like building an ice cream sundae. The words are gonna be the ice cream scoops and the pictures are gonna be the decorative toppings. As an author, I'm always trying to find the right balance between delivering information to my reader and making it exciting to look at. So think about the amounts of each ingredients, words and pictures, you need to build the right book. How do you know the right amount? Well, sometimes you have to experiment by adding to a picture or taking things away from a picture. I'll give you an example from my own book. The Z for Zucchini page started out looking like this with just a cupcake. It looked okay, but I decided it needed something more. So I added fireworks to the background. I think it's better. And here's another example from the Big Nate book series. The words say, there are so many ways for a school day to go wrong that it's almost impossible to list them. Well, the picture doesn't try to show them all. All you need to see is one example and you immediately get the idea. So in your story, experiment with how complex or simple you need your pictures to be. Step number three, Choose your tools. There are a million ways to make pictures for your book. If you like to draw, that's a good place to start. You could use crayons or chalk or colored pencils. But remember, there are no rules in art. There's no wrong way to do it. Sometimes kids worry that they aren't good enough artists yet. Well, let me introduce you to author Todd Parr. He's become famous for creating picture books that don't seem very hard to make, but are super fun to look at. Let's take a peek. Here's some pages from his book, The Mommy Book. Pretty fun, huh? Or let's look at another example, Harold and the Purple Crayon. With just a few simple lines, the reader understands that Harold is in trouble when he's falling off the side of this mountain. Here, the simple art works beautifully. But beyond drawing, there are other ways to make amazing images for your book. You could make or take pictures with a camera. That's what I did. Here's some pages from my book about vegetables. Or you could design an image on the computer or make a collage by cutting pictures from old magazines or newspapers. I like the cover of the new book, Radiant Child. You can see that there's a collage in the background. So get creative. Step number four, what to show. Okay, you have your tools in front of you and you're ready to make some art, but what exactly do you make? Good news, you're the boss of your own story, so you get to decide exactly what to show in your pictures. But you don't have to do the first thing that pops in your head. Brainstorm and think about all your choices. I have an author friend who is a painter. Let's see what she says about choosing pictures for her book. Hi. My name is Ashley Walter. I'm the author and illustrator of the Up North Alphabet. Author means I wrote the words, 
An illustrator means I also painted the pictures. I did a watercolor painting for every letter of the alphabet that represents special places and things in Northern Michigan where I live. I want to show you a couple of the letters today to represent picture choice and how important it is to choose the right picture to represent what you want in a picture book. I want to show you X because it was really hard to choose. There aren't a lot of words that start with X and there aren't a lot of things where I live that start with X. But one thing I love to do is cross country ski. So I kind of made that into the X. The funny thing about this picture is that my kids think it looks like toothpaste. You might think it looks like toothpaste too. It's supposed to represent the snow. I also want to show you another letter. This is Michigan's state stone. P is for Petoskey stone. I could have chosen porcupine because there are porcupines in Northern Michigan too, but I chose P because it's very special to Northern Michigan. These are just a few ideas for how you might choose a picture to go with exactly what you want to say in your book. Thanks for having me. Step five, how to show it. Even after you know what you want to show in your picture, you can still get creative about how to show it. You can ask yourself, am I a bird or a bug or someone in between? Let me explain. We often see pictures from straight ahead, like you're seeing me right now on the screen. But for something more surprising, you could imagine how a bird in the sky or a bug down on the ground might be seeing it. Here's some examples of pictures I took of my dog. Looking straight on or looking up or looking down. See the differences? So play along with the different angles to get interesting and memorable pictures. Not sure which choice is better? Let's say you've done a bunch of pictures for your story and you like them all, but you're not sure which one to use in your official book. Well, professional authors always have test readers that look at their stories before they are finished and tell the author what they like. You can do the same thing. Ask people you trust like family members or teachers or friends for their opinions. I'll ask you guys right now. My next book is all about colorful fruit. Which one of these pictures do you like best? Tip number six, having good art supplies. Sometimes kids worry that they don't have good enough art supplies, but you don't need a lot to make a really great picture. Some of my favorite stories have just black and white pictures made with pencil or pen. Let's look at this book, Ike's Incredible Ink. A lot of the pictures in the book use mostly black. Look at this one. Pretty powerful, huh? But get creative with the supplies you do have. I like to check the recycling bin where I can find colorful cardboard from old cereal boxes. Or you could use the colored um, paper from granola bar wrappers or gummy packs. You can even pick up things in nature like leaves or grass or flower petals. There's no wrong way, remember. Tip number seven, try and try again. When making art for your story, sometimes you need more than one draft or one try. You may have heard the word revise before. Revise means to take something and try to rework it and make it better. When my kids are building a Lego tower that keeps falling over, that means they might need to make some changes and build it differently to make it stronger. Do the same thing with your books. Keep reworking the words and pictures until you get them just right. Let me show you an example from my book. I remember struggling with the letter O page. I wanted to show that onions were really round like the earth. So I took this picture of onions in front of some globes, but it was confusing. I had to try something different. So I started putting onions on top of some golf balls and it looked much better. This ended up being the, the page I used in my book. 
So don't be afraid to start over with a fresh idea. Tip number eight, celebrate. So you've found the perfect pictures to go with your words and now your story is complete. Congratulations. All that's left to do is celebrate. <laughs> you've created something that never existed on earth before. You're amazing. Keep practicing and building your author skills. You're doing great. I can't wait to see the stories you're going to create. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Lisa Maxbauer Price with Squash Boom Beat. Bye.